Lordy. There was a lot of really underwhelming stuff last year. Well, I guess if you win some, you lose some. These are the top 10 most disappointing games of 2017. Real quick guys, a couple of disclaimers is this is my personal bias list of my top 10 most disappointing games that personally for me were pretty underwhelming so our opinions are most likely going to differ, more than likely you're not going to agree with this list but hey, different opinions make the world a better place so huzzah! Also there were a lot of disappointing games last year and to be fair, a lot of them should be included on this list however I could only condense it down to 10 that I personally thought were pretty disappointing for myself so with that that being said, I can only fit them on the 10 games, but there's not a specific game on this list that you guys thought was pretty disappointing. Feel free to leave a comment below on what you guys thought pretty disappointed you last year. And lastly, I know it sounds crazy, but believe it or not, I have not played every single solitary game that came out last year, so more than likely, if there's a super bad game last year that came out that should have been on this list, but isn't, probably because it wouldn't go out of my way to purchase that game. Some of these games I didn't actually buy myself, I just had the ability to play them hands-on thing thankfully, but that doesn't necessarily mean I bought them, but these games I did play, get my hands on, games I have not played whatsoever are not going to be counted. With all those disclaimers out of the way, let's get right into this shithole. So kicking off our list is a game I was pretty hopeful for, which isn't really that bad, that's kind of why I'm starting out on this list, is Friday the 13th, the game. Now this game is super, 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 super fun if you have multiple friends to play with you, especially when you and all of your friends are just playing the counselors and Jason's coming after you, it's f***ing terrifying and trying to get away from him or trying to find a good hiding spot, it gets super suspenseful and with friends, it's just a thrill ride to be had. Playing as Jason also had its most moments too. I love being able to terrorize people when you sneak up behind someone. No! It's so great. However, the main reason why it's on this list is because of the game state when it was first released. Yeah, I think all of you guys know what I'm talking about for those of you that have actually played it at release. When the game first came out, holy crap, bugs constantly. I was constantly falling out of lobbies. I would hardly ever be able to fully complete a game because it kept dropping me. And it wasn't just me, it was happening to multiple people I knew, friends I knew, people messaging me, telling me that the game was super buggy, not to buy it at release. Super happy I didn't actually purchase this. I just played at a friend's house, thankfully. However, I could definitely see why a lot of people were getting upset about it. Also, some of those facial animations, I swear, some of the counselor's faces, especially up close, some of them look even more scary than Jason. No! Nine. Next on my list is a game that pretty much nobody played last year, not surprisingly, because there was pretty much zero marketing for it. I don't know why, because considering what this game surrounds, it should have been more hyped than it was, but I guess not, but for the, believe it or not guys, you're not missing much here. This goes out to Agents of Mayhem. Now this game isn't really bad, it's not great, it's just very, 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 very mediocre. One of my friends was watching me play it and they were cringing at a lot of the really bad jokes throughout it. Some of the jokes in there are pretty good. However, this falls within the Saints Row universe, so I was kind of expecting that. However, I felt it went a little bit too far with the cringiness this time around. I mean, essentially, it's just a standard third-person shooter. If you guys ever played a third-person shooter, it's pretty much that. I mean, hell, if you guys ever played a Saints Row game, it feels very similar to games like Saints Row the Third, except no superpowers and it's pretty much like the same game. Overall, the game is just super repetitive. A lot of the missions feel exactly the same. You look for a specific object that leads you to an enemy's underground lair. You go in there, you fight waves of enemies, and then you potentially fight a, a small boss or an occasional story boss, which are super underwhelming because they're really easy, to be honest, and not the ones that aren't really easy are essentially just bullet sponges. And the open world is very uninspired. There's not much to do and the challenges and races that are there, you really don't care to do them because, well, I mean, pretty much any other game in existence plays very similar to this one where shooting is, seems very really familiar, driving seems very familiar, just the mechanics overall seem very familiar. Otherwise, just a very repetitive, mediocre game, honestly, you're just not missing much of this one, unfortunately. 
Oh my lord, will they fucking stop it with this shit? Oh, this really, this really was kind of hard, but I had to put it on. That goes up to Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. What the fuck? The character roster this time around fucking sucks. Where are the X-Men? Why? There's no X-Men? You're gonna have Marvel vs. Capcom? No Wolverine? Seriously? Seriously. You guys have the license for Marvel and you can't somehow obtain the rights for X- You can't put in one X-Men? Give me a break. And the game's story? I wouldn't even call it that because what story is there? It's extremely forgettable. You don't remember a single thing that happens nor do you give a shit. Plus a lot of the team-ups and the plots are just gaping with holes. They don't really make any sense whatsoever. I feel like they just threw stuff in there for the sake of throwing stuff in there and they just really didn't care for the story and they just wanted to put more effort in the multiplayer aspect. Which kind of makes you wonder what the hell were they doing exactly because when the game first released multiplayer was almost pretty much broken. I don't know about you guys but I could hardly play against even a 1v1 match. I was almost always dropping out and I eventually just gave up on it. I returned back later it's a little bit more stable but seriously at release when a game is that broken that unstable there's really no excuse for it. You should be able to handle that going into the game's release. You should always be prepared for that but Capcom or the internet has known them as Crapcom, has yet to not really learn from their mistakes. Again. Seven. This one, which I had some hopes for, but I wasn't going to be overly hyped for it because of a certain company that's making it. That unfortunately does have to go out to For Honor. I was actually pretty stoked for this when I first heard about it. I was like, oh, interesting. It's basically like a medieval multiplayer game, but then what ultimately just absolutely murdered the game is because it is multiplayer only. That's it. Not only that, but again, the game release, super buggy as hell, people constantly dropping in and out of lobbies. Oh yeah, and that includes things that everybody in the gaming industry absolutely loves, you know? You know that one thing that uh, a regular gamer just absolutely loves when a uh, high-end corporate publisher puts into their game? You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they have those wonderful things called microtransactions. Woohoo! Yes! Are you fucking kidding me? Ultimately, I've been telling people this for years, is that multiplayer-only games are not the future of gaming. It absolutely butchered this game because just look at it. I mean, pretty much nobody's playing it now. And in fact, I actually read some statistics on it. More than 60%, 60% of the player base that were first playing this game on launch day, 60% less people were playing it only three months after the game released. That just shows you how absolutely forgettable, repetitive, broken the game was. It's such a shame because it could have been a great one, but damn it, Ubisoft just had to go and take a shit on it. Okay. Six. Next, we have Call of Duty World War II. So a lot of people like this one, a lot of people don't. It's pretty split between the gaming community, but personally with me, it's not terrible, but it's not great either, hence why it's disappointing. So why is it disappointing? Well, for one thing, campaign, absolutely forgettable. It's not terrible, it's not complete dog shit, like Call of Duty Ghost, <coughs> or like uh, <coughs> Warfare. <coughs> but campaign, I couldn't tell you a single character's name, nor do you give a shit about any of them. Plus, for a World War II setting, things are a bit way over the top, like that absolutely crazy train wreck scene. It's just, you're just kind of playing through the game and all of a sudden that part happens and you're just like, what? And plus, and when you look at those situations, characters survive in absolutely ridiculous ways that it's completely unrealistic and it totally takes you out of the experience where you're just like, no, 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 that, that would never happen in real life, sorry. Don't buy it. Multiplayer is okay. I mean, if you played any other Call of Duty game in your life, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Here, I mean, you're not missing much. It's pretty much just Call of Duty all over again. Mediocrity at its finest. Now, a lot of people may say, well, of course this game was supposed to be mediocre and disappointing. What are you expecting? Well, why am I putting it on this list? Oh yeah, because on top of that other pile of crap, we have to put the cherry on the shit cake. Loot boxes and microtransactions. Seriously, why do developers keep fucking doing this? Or not necessarily developers, but publishers. Why do they keep putting this crap in our games? We don't want loot boxes. It's basically gambling. You don't know what you're getting until you open it. That's fucking gambling. The fact that people don't realize that boggles my mind. Why the fuck are the 
I don't understand it. I, I really don't. Oh, you want to increase your chances of getting better loot? More money, please. Oh, you want that really badass weapon that'll make you an absolute beast on the field? More money, please. So yeah, I guess you could say that pretty much every developer that has implemented loot boxes and microtransactions is going to be on this list, but can you really blame me? Because none of us want this crap on our games. It's unacceptable, and we'll need to call developers and publishers out on it because, frankly, this needs to stop. Five. Destiny 2. Now, when the first Destiny first released, you guys know that I did put it on my top 10 disappointing games list for that year. However, when this one was announced, I was honestly like, okay, I'm certain they're listening to feedback from fans. I'm certain Activision is as well. I have no doubt that they'll prove upon the last game. Did they? Yes. Yes, they did. By how much? The uh, story, once again, pretty unforgettable, and we still don't get a whole lot of explanation. Oh yeah, and again, they did this crap again! If you want to know more about the lore and the past with this universe, you have to go online and read some grimoire. They don't put the actual story elements in the fucking game! That takes me out of the game completely, and it just screams lazy. Multiplayer for it is pretty much a clone of the first game. It has some improvements here and there, but overall, it's very, very familiar. And oh yeah, it had tons of issues when it released as well that, uh, that Activision and Bungie just looked over and didn't care about until the game was already released and they got all your money. Yeah, thanks. I really, really, really didn't want to put this game on this list, but I had to. It's because, as a fellow gamer, I just have to communicate this to you guys so you know what you're getting into. Game is very, very fun with friends, but by yourself it's practically unplayable. Oh, damn it. Ghost Recon Wildlands. I was hyping this game up to shit. I'm not even kidding. When I saw the first gameplay trailer for this at E3, I have a reaction video to it, I was stoked. I was like, holy shit, this looks amazing. Some people were a bit skeptical, including myself a little bit. I was trying to keep my expectations at a reasonable level, just so I wouldn't be overhyped and disappointed. However, the game came out, and holy crap, so many fucking bugs and glitches. It's unacceptable, I and mean, it's even worse than you play with friends, but... You kind of have to play with friends in this game, because if you play it by yourself, it's so fucking boring. It basically feels like a chore. You fight the exact same enemy types over and over and over again. There's really not that many weapons in the game or abilities to unlock. Oh, but you want to get more weapons? You want to unlock more costumes? Of course, we just had to go ahead and implement microtransactions because fuck you, Ubisoft, give me money. I absolutely love the world in it, though. There is a lot of diversity between the geographic locations. You have that jungle area, you have a desert area, urban area is my personal favorite salt sea location just to fly around in and try to take out some bases that are around there. Super fun to play those on. However, the game is so damn broken with friends that it's funny, but not in a good way because you're playing it and you're laughing at it because of how ridiculous it is. Like things, the amount of glitches I experienced in my playthrough with friends is insane. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I can't hear you. I'm getting in the car. Are you here, just put him in here, Jackson. Don't <laughs> dare run me over, you prick. <laughs> you know, I was considering it until you mentioned it. Jackson, why can't song. you put him in? Oh yeah, no, I, literally... <laughs> I can't. What? what do you mean That's you just... can't? Oh, there we go. Put okay. him in the trunk. Put him in the trunk. Oh, God, shit. Fox is apparently a thing. Hey, let's go. Just like, oh, what? What? Ah, lag! What? Ah, what? Lag. 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 What
Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Somebody record that. Somebody record that. Why is it one frame a minute? Somebody record that. Anybody record that. I have one. Guys, I don't know. My frame rate's so horrible. Somebody, what the fuck? Somebody record that. It's like a slideshow. What is going on? He was in the car with me. What? Like, dude, what the hold up, try, see, hold up, hold up, <laughs> see, what is happening? Hold up, see if it will happen again. Wait, Demon see if it will happen again. Put him, put, oh, see if it happens again. Put him in the car and see if it happens again. I can't put him in the car. We okay, <laughs> Logan, okay, yeah, Logan, let Logan, put him. him. Yeah, let, it, let him go and put okay, him in Logan. Okay, you take care of him, and then, try it again. okay, tell me put when him you have him. Him. Put him in the passenger. Put him in the passenger. He's sitting right here! Okay, well, just what? Get, get, get. Well, then you're- Yo, what the- What? <laughs> Demon! Why you... is he teleporting? <laughs> Demon! <laughs> Alright! You know what? Screw this! Oh, I don't have any grenades. Right, Dang it! What? Demon, grab what do you mean he's I can't... killed? He's what? right here! He's right here! <laughs> I shot him! What are you this talking game about? Bro, Oh, I shot him! Holy fuck! <laughs> uh, Logan, oh, there's a slight okay. problem. There's no gun. <laughs> what? Wait, oh my god! Ryan, you're you're gonna gonna the go the <laughs> what? Put him in thing, put him in thing. Surprise, hurry, motherfucker. Hurry, 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 hurry. And you're invisible! You were get, invisible. Get in Ta-da! I couldn't play uh, for 30 minutes in this game without running into almost a game-breaking bug. I got stuck so many fucking times on things I shouldn't have been stuck on. The driving mechanics are awful. Awful. Ugh. I almost threw up in my mouth because just thinking about it... Yeah. A lot of missions in this game do require you to use vehicles as well and... The vehicles don't work. And of course, because I'm such an intelligent person, guess what I did? I went ahead and bought the season pass for this, so I actually did play all the DLC for this. And the first DLC they released, I don't even know what the name of it is, so feel free to correct me in the comments, but it's basically focused on driving. The first DLC they released for this is focused on driving. What the fuck were you guys thinking? You make your DLC focused on the worst aspect of your game? Are you fucking kidding me? The latest DLC was promoted as you being hunted instead of being the hunters, but essentially it's just more missions. It's basically a story DLC, although it doesn't really have much story. Oh yeah, and uh, the game's regular story. Uh, it has two endings, uh, one false ending, one true ending, and they both are, they're pretty bad. They fucking suck. Three. Uh, damn it. No. <sighs> this was super hard. I told myself, you know what? There's so much fun and playability with it. It shouldn't be on the list. It shouldn't be. But the things that surround it, the things that are happening in the background, you're constantly being reminded of certain things throughout this game. I can't forgive it, especially for the absolute crazy amount of controversy surrounding it. It had to be on this list, which sucks because I was really looking forward to this because of the previous game before it, but alas, it, uh, it disappointed the shit out of me. Middle Earth, Shadow of War. Now here's the thing, guys. I know this game does include microtransactions. A lot of people were boycotting it because of that, which they should, and that loot box crap. Believe it or not, I actually did complete this entire game, including getting the true ending without getting a single microtransaction. So I was thinking about that, and I was like, I beat the whole game without spending a single penny on microtransactions. Why are they here? Oh yeah, because of corporate greed. But I don't understand, like the way they implemented it is to allow you to beat the game faster? Why? I, I have a question for you developers. Why, why do you think gamers play games? To play the fucking game. When you force us to spend money on a game to beat it faster, that defeats the whole purpose of playing a game in the first place. So if you guys think about it, it's really not even a game in that sense. It's really just more of a slot machine where you press more buttons and you 
explore a little bit more, I guess. I, it doesn't make sense. The way they implemented it just doesn't make sense to me. But I'll go back to that crap in a second. How was the game itself? The gameplay itself is solid. The gameplay, the combat, the parkour and maneuvering around the whole world, it's vastly improved upon the last game. It was super easy to traverse around, and I love the multiple different environments they put around. The last game, there was only two different environments, but here, I think there's like five or six multiple different environments, all vastly unique. I really liked that, and I appreciated that as well. There's a lot more abilities, skills to unlock. You can either have certain fire abilities or ice abilities, and you can switch these to either or whenever you feel like it. The story is meh. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not really that good either. I mean, it's just there, I guess. It doesn't really affect anything. So overall, the story is pretty forgettable, and some choices they made throughout the story really didn't make sense. Like, why is Shelob a really hot girl? It was just like, okay, I guess... Okay, is this canon? Yes, though, that's weird. That was never mentioned in the books. However, the story pretty much falls flat on its face at the ending. Why? Oh yeah, because you know, you, you guys know what the, you guys want to know what the, uh, the end game makes you do. So once the main story is complete, you get a pretty shitty ending and the game tells you, oh, this isn't the real ending, play some of the sieges and then you'll, you'll get the true ending. However, they make you do siege after siege after siege after siege after siege and it's f***ing ridiculous! You have to do like f***ing 20 of them! Each one can take like up to an hour to do, maybe maybe even longer. And yeah, a lot of the enemies that are contained within these fortresses are fucking overpowered. And you wanna know why that is? Because it's the developers being smart saying, hey, let's put in some really overpowered orcs, that way the player has to use the microtransactions to get some really powerful orc followers. That way, their army will be more stronger than the army in the siege fortress. Yeah, we got them now, fuck yeah, fuck them, give me money. Like, no, no, when I got to that part, I was playing siege after siege after siege, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and grind through this. I gotta get the true ending. I gotta know what happens because I just, I don't know, the, the story, even though it's pretty underwhelming, does seem kind of interesting. And it is Lord of the Rings. I love everything Lord of the Rings. I was like, I gotta see what happens to Talion. I really want to see what happens with his character and the story and how it leads into the movies. So, I grinded through all the sieges, finally beat them out after countless hours of grinding, trying to make sure my orc army was as powerful as possible. Even a couple times where my ranking was a little bit below the enemy's ranking, I was still able to beat them. So I guess in the end, you don't really have to grind that much to be overly powerful the enemy. You can kind of be on their level a bit below and I think you can get through them just fine. However, the true ending sucks ass. Fuck! Countless hours wasted. So guys, unfortunately, I do have to say, if you absolutely want to play this game, rent it. Absolutely do not buy it at full price. Do not buy it at half price. I would probably pick this game out if it's less than $10. Anything more, I don't think it's worth it. Beyond that, just rent it. It's such a shame because the gameplay surrounding this, what's there is good. You can see the heart and passion the developers put into this, but there's just so much shady shit with the microtransactions and loot boxes. The game constantly reminds you, hey, 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 it's still, it's still there. Make sure you go to the marketplace. Make sure, hey, hey, marketplace, go there please constantly, and it pissed me off, so middle verse shot of war, fuck you, you earn your spot on this list, no questions asked. Oh, I'm so fucking tired of these loot box microtransactions. Bullshit! Two. Oh, sorry, my face is tired from doing all this. That goes out to Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> well, congratulate yourself. No one has ever so successfully dodged my attempts to get to know them. Yes! I'm number one! <laughs> are you for real? You were going to tell me who you are. I might just be the solution to all your problems. Well, look at that. There were so many glitches 
and bugs, game breaking bugs, I ran into this game, it's not even funny. I made a video about it and those, every single one of those were encountered by me. That was just a scene, that was my first playthrough, first time. Oh my lord, I can't, I can't even express in the words how absolutely ridiculous it is. <laughs> Now some of you may find it funny, like, oh yeah, I kind of like running into those silly glitches. Makes the game more enjoyable because it's fun to get a good laugh and whatnot. No, but it's constantly happening to you every 10 fucking seconds, and it, it's more annoying than funny at that point. Damn. You sure you can keep going? To the Tempest. We have to move! <laughs> 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 Ow, man, my stomach. <laughs> We're not throwing anyone's lives away, but the remnant give us a chance. To <laughs> okay, so beyond that, how's the actual game? when it functions. I will say this, the combat in this game is by far my favorite combat in all of the Mass Effect games. A lot of people are gonna disagree with me and I totally get that, mainly because it doesn't have a cover to cover aspect, but the gameplay itself, I really do like. I do think there's a lot of variety with using your weapons and certain abilities you have. I really thought that they kind of expressed those out. I also like having the idea of pretty much being any class that you want instead of being restricted to one class. Some people don't like that. I do, but to each their own. Unfortunately, that's pretty much it when it comes to the good things in the game. Everything else is pretty, yeah, it's not that good. It's it's not pretty, it's kind of shitty actually. Uh, story's bland as hell. I couldn't even tell you guys a single character's name except Ryder, I think his name is, Ryder? That's his name, right, the main character? I don't know. They just simply reuse the same races from the past Mass Effect game. They don't even bother creating any new alien species. It's like, what the fuck, why not? And holy fucking shit! Those faces! They are just disturbing. It's not even funny, it's just, it's terrifying. Look at this shit! Sorry. Okay. Let's move on before I throw up again. You're not Alec Ryder. My father's dead. He made me his successor. Alec is dead. <laughs> Please understand. Oh, which one? Master Specialist, Suck Ray, Pack Ray, Elite Officer of Ray, and uh, I guess this one. Please give me something good. What the fuck, please? This is so stupid. Uh, I guess. Specialist? Uh. Okay, do I get a, do I get a hero unlock? You don't. You son of a bitch! Just give me a motherfucking hero! These fucking 
Press the fuck. Okay, I'll try one more. Come on. Better give me something good. You better give me a fucking hero's fucking You son of a It's, it's Battlefront 2. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Or Star Wars Battlefront 2 EA, and I'm gonna keep calling you that from now on because that's how they put the fucking logo on the cover of the game. So why is this game number one? Well, of course, for one thing, it's no secret, I'm a huge Star Wars game fan. And believe it or not, when I did see the first gameplay trailer for this, it was released at E3, I actually thought it looked pretty impressive. I was like, oh wow, it's definitely improving upon the last game. It looks like there's going to be a lot more variety with classes, worlds. Oh nice, they're bringing in the prequel trilogy and you can play as the prequel armies, that's really awesome. Oh, there's a lot more heroes you can play as as well. Oh sweet, space battles? Awesome! A single player campaign as well? Holy shit, they're actually listening to us. And they're saying it has three times the content? What? Is this EA? Are they seriously listening to us? This is awesome! Well, I just can absolutely not wait to play the- No, 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 no. What, what did I just tell you guys earlier in this video? Are you developers and publishers even and listening to us? Stop! Stop this crap! We don't want loot boxes, we don't want microtransactions in our full priced $60 games. You are deliberately trying to milk the customer dry with this crap. It's no secret and stop saying that, oh, you can feel a sense of accomplishment when you grind for countless hours and then you unlock the hero or you can unlock it faster with microtransactions. No, fuck you. We shouldn't have to pay $60 only for another player to come along that has more money and beats the shit out of everybody else else because they spent so much money on the microtransactions. That's fucking pay to win. This is not a mobile game, EA. This is a full price $60 game that we have to pay you guys up front to be able to experience. We shouldn't have to pay more money to get a more enjoyable experience. That This is not a free mobile game. Take this shit out and shove it up your asses. Oh, but sure, so, uh, EA actually removed the microtransactions. Temporarily. I think people seem to keep forgetting that the word temporarily is thrown in there. They're going to put them back later. You, got, you guys know they are. Just stop defending, stop defending EA. Just stop. Stop, okay? Look, if we don't call this shit out, if we just accept to take this crap up the ass, it's going to keep happening, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse to the point where games are pretty much unplayable. They're going to cost $500 each, and they're going to have hundreds of dollars more microtransactions until we finally call games out on this shit. This needs to stop. It's pay-to-win garbage. I absolutely can't stand it. And the way they're trying to damage control it, saying, oh, no worries, we're going to temporarily take the microtransactions about. You guys know why they did that, because the holiday season was coming up and they didn't want to get their sales hurt, which, oh, too bad, they already did. EA lost billions of dollars in stock because of the controversy surrounding this game, and it's deserved. It really is deserved. I mean, EA needs to learn from this. Absolutely needs to learn from this. So the game itself, how is it? Well. Disappointing to say the least. That's why it's kind of up here on number one. Single player campaign, super short. It's only, it took me three and a half hours to beat, maybe a little bit less than that. And it's uh, it's not that good. It's really not. I would just say it's mediocre, but if you actually pay attention to the story, which unfortunately I did, it's uh, it, it, it has so many plot holes, it doesn't make any fucking sense, and everything is predictable. When the game was advertised, it would say, hey, you get to play as the Empire, and you're going to wonder how the First Order was formed, and how eventually the Rebel Alliance formed us into the Resistance, and you get to play as the enemy faction. I was like, holy crap, 
That's actually pretty smart. I kind of do want to see what the Empire went through after the Emperor was defeated. This will be pretty interesting. Oh, wait, no. You play as the Empire for two fucking missions, and then you immediately turn on war to the Rebel Alliance, and they welcome you in! What? Yeah, what? You just... You literally are, as you were playing on the Empire side, murdered hundreds of rebel soldiers, and then Princess Leia is like, yeah, of course, we'd love to have you. What, after murdering half our army? Are you fucking kidding me? Who in the right minds would, I would execute her on sight. Are you fucking shitting me? No. So campaign overall, pretty crappy. The best parts of it though, by far, were definitely the flying sequences. The flying in this game is actually improved upon the last, and it's debatably the best part of the game. Flying is really fluent and easy to get the hang of, and the combat is also really nice as well, taking out an enemy, and you have certain abilities on your ships as well to take out other enemy ships, and you gotta have a little cooldown timer with those abilities, but they are pretty fun to use nonetheless. And once you get the hang of it, I mean you, a group of friends against a whole bunch of other people in space combat, it's a hell of a time. The multiplayer, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as the last game. Not a whole lot has been improved. I mean, there is a little bit more variety here, but not by a whole lot. Unfortunately, because of the huge, huge amount of grinding you have to go through, even after they said, oh, no worries, we're going to reduce the time it takes to be able to unlock a hero, it still takes way too long. I can't even imagine how long it would take if they just kept in the normal time and how long you eventually lock a hero. It's absolutely absurd how many matches you actually have to play before you unlock a hero. And you can only play as a hero for one fucking match anyway. So it's like, why am I fucking doing this to myself? This feels like more like a chore than having a good time. The game looks absolutely gorgeous. I have to commend the developers on that. DICE, you guys did an incredible job with how the game looks. No complaints about that whatsoever. I am absolutely really, really impressed with that. Sound design, top notch as well. Graphics, sound, 10 out of 10. I mean, the gameplay itself, it's a solid shooter. The space combat's fun, ships are fun to fly around in. The gameplay, the foundation of the game is there, and it's solid. However, it's just boggled down by all these ridiculous corporate decisions that were implemented in this game that just absolutely destroy it. And it's just, at the end of the day, it's a pay to win game. It's just, ugh. So congrats EA, you guys made the uh, most disappointing game of last year, and uh, you guys have a lot to make up for if you're going to be making a Battlefront 3, if you make a Battlefront 3. If you guys do, I'm telling you, you guys better fucking get it right this time, or I fucking swear, me and every Star Wars fan are coming after you. It's not going to be pretty, trust me. And please. For the love of holy and everything that is good on this green earth, get rid of the microtransactions and loot boxes completely. Take it out. We don't want this garbage. It's insulting to the gaming community. I don't understand why developers think that these are a good idea. They're not. Whenever I hear loot boxes and microtransactions, I get f***ing pissed off. I'm tired of it. I'm sure as all of you guys are as well. So take out this shit because it's f***ing ridiculous. Whew. Okay, I got the all out of my system, and that, I gotta be honest, that felt really good. I hope you guys enjoyed my several minutes of ranting. It actually was pretty fun to vent out my frustration because it is kind of fun to call out developers in certain games, and they really don't perform as much as they hyped them up to be at the end of the day. I know there were a lot of games that came out last year that were really underwhelming, so please, if you guys have a top 10 list you'd like to throw down in the comments, please feel free to do that. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it really helps me out. And as always, be sure to subscribe, and hopefully 2018 will be much better than the shithole that we had last year. <sighs>